Toby Story by Bruce Cameron, Chapter 3. It was a few days after that that I heard a car door slam. I was dozing in the shade of the small house where only my mother, Sadie, and I live now, and I looked up to see Walt walking toward our pen with a tall woman and a girl beside him. I saw your sign out front that said, Dog free to a good home, the woman was saying to Walt. But oh dear, a beagle? He's so cute, the girl cried. Oh, look at him. I looked at her. She had dark brown hair that curled around her face and freckles scattered across her nose and cheeks. I wondered how they cha- they'd taste. He's adorable, Mona, the woman said. But a beagle's not the right breed for us, I'm afraid. They have so much energy. They need to run all day. That's not going to work. Oh, the girl said sadly. She was staring at me through the wire of the pen. I stared back at her. I swished my tail back and forth, hopefully. Was this my family come to get me at last? Well, Toby's not your usual beagle, Walt said. Sweet little guy, very friendly, but he doesn't seem to want to run or chase much of anything. So I can't sell him off as a hunting dog like I did his brothers and sisters. I'd hate to have to put him down. The girl, Mona, gasped. But I don't have room on this place for a dog that just wants to lie around, Walt finished up. A dog that wants to lie around is just what we need, the woman said. Mona's dark, wide eyes seemed to get wider. Really, Mom? Walt looked hopeful. It doesn't bother you that he's a beagle who doesn't run? Well, it's hard to explain, Mona's mother answered, but I do believe he's going to be perfect. We'll take Toby. And that is how I left Walt in the ranch and my mother, and found myself riding along in the back seat of a car held close in Mona's arms. She felt warm and smelled excellent, sweat from her skin, something delightfully salty and sweet on her breath, berries in her curly hair. I squirmed so I could get my nose into every wrinkle of her shirt and every crease of her neck. I licked her freckles, which did not taste much like anything after all, and her mouth. She laughed, Mom, he's so friendly. He's going to be perfect. Let's hope so, her mother answered from the front seat. The car had glass windows, and when I was done smelling and tasting Mona, I wiggled over to put my paws up on one of them and see what was outside. Everything was moving. Trees and bushes and other cars went past in a bewildered burr. I had no idea the world moved so quickly. Then the car stopped, and the world stopped it. Holding me snugly, Mona wiggled out of the car. We were outside a large building. I was used to seeing Walt come in and out of my ho- his house, but this building was much bigger. When we went inside, I discovered something remarkable. The building was full of people. Did all buildings have this many people? There was a sort of table in front of us with a woman sitting behind it. She was laughing in an astonished way as Mona put me down on the floor. The cool tiles felt good on my itchy feet. I was tempted to lie down and give the pads of my paws a good chewing. But there was so much to see and do, for now I ignored the itching and kept moving. A long hallway ran down off in one direction and another in an opposite direction. There were doors along each hallway and people too, so many people. Some of the people were sitting in chairs that had big wheels on them. Some were walking slowly, leaning on long sticks. Others seemed to be hurrying as they all had important things to do. I ran along the hallway, sniffing each new friend eagerly with Mona right behind me. They smelled interesting, not like Walt. Walt had the smell of mud and sweat and food and other animals. Most of these people smelled of something unusual, something I had never smelled before. I could not decide if I liked it or not. It was not a smell of the outside world that I was used to. Really, all that it smelled was was clean. Who would want to be clean when dirty smells were so much more interesting? A few of the doors were open, and when I peeked inside, I saw beds and more people. It was all overwhelming that I ignored the signals coming from my bladder until they got so powerful that I had to squat right where I was. Toby, not here, Mona gasped. She snatched me up before I even got started and rushed me down the hallway and out through a different door from the one we had come in. We were in the yard with the concrete sidewalks and a smooth lawn. At the far side of the lawn was a tall wooden fence with a few trees and bushes growing next to it. Mona put me down on the grass so I could finish what I'd been what I was doing. Once I was done, she scooped me up again and cuddled me while I licked at her chin. You're going to be a great therapy dog, Toby. I just know you will, she told me. I didn't know what those words meant, but I liked the tone of her voice. I could hear love and approval in it, 
I loved her too. I was pretty sure that Mona and maybe her mother had just become my human family. Listen now, Toby, Mona said, and she sat down on the grass with me in her lap. Her voice sounded serious, and I was a little tired after all the excitement. I plopped down on her legs and nibbled at her fingers just a little so she would know that I liked her as much as she liked me. The people here, they need a dog like you. They're old, Toby. She dropped her voice a little, and I could tell she was talking just to me. Too old to live by themselves anymore. So they come here, and my mom helps take care of them. She's a therapist. There are other people who work here too, of course. All the nurses and orderlies, and there's Fran. She's the boss. But see, people can't do everything. People can give the patients their medicine and help them get into wheelchairs and stuff like that. But they can't really make them happy. That's what you can do. Toby, you can make people happy. And I'll, and I'll help you, okay? We'll be a team, you and me. I like Mona very much. She tastes delicious, and she was good at scratching along my spine and behind my ears. On the second day in our new home, she brought me a collar with a tag on it that rang like a bell when I shook myself and jangled when I ran. And the best thing that Mona was, this, she talked to me all the time. I didn't understand her words, but I was delighted by her tone of voice. It told me that she loved me and trusted me and that she thought I was important. Out of all the people in my new home, she was my favorite. But I liked all the people, and I met more and more of them as the days went by. There were the people in the chairs and the people in the beds. I visited them regularly. Some fed me treats, which was excellent. Some petted me and talked to me, calling me by my name. Toby, come, they said. Here, Toby. Where's Toby? Good dog, Toby. I liked hearing my name over and over in so many different voices. I liked having so many people to greet me every day. When I was tired or my feet needed a good chewing, I'd lie down beside a chair or a bed, and sometimes Mona or her mother would pick me up and put me on their lap or on a soft blanket next to someone who was lying down. I'd take a snooze there, only waking up if my feet itched so badly that I could not stay asleep. Since I was tired a lot, it was good that my new house had so many laps and so many beds. Good dog, Toby, Mona's mother said one day, stroking me as I lay on a bed next to a woman in a white, with white hair and very soft skin that gave off a smell of flowers. Another woman had come into the room and stood there with folded arms. She had gray hair, cut short, and was short and thin herself, with a frown on her face. I was skeptical about that whole therapy dog idea, Patsy, she said. I was starting to understand that Mona's mother had two names, Mom to Mona and Patsy to everyone else. It was confusing, but people are like that. They hardly ever do things the simplest way. But I had to admit, you got me half convinced, the other woman went on. That thing isn't half as much trouble as I thought it would be. He's perfect, Fran, Mona agreed, rubbing my ears. He just wants to lie around here, and that's what we need him for. I think we can start some real training very soon. The second woman, Fran, stood watching me for a little bit longer. She stood with the way another dog does when he wants something to know someone to know he's in charge. Very tall, as tall as she could. Her voice sounded in charge, too. She talked quickly and firmly and a bit louder than Patsy. I understood that she was the boss, and I lowered my head a little and wagged my tail to show her that I would not try to question her leadership. When the white-haired woman began very quietly snoring, Mona came and took me outside to the lawn. After I left a puddle soaking into the dirt, I flopped over to gnaw at one of my back paws, which was itching fiercely. Someone inside pushed the door open. A tall boy came out. I could tell he was young, not a man yet. Puppies don't look around or smell like grown-up dogs, and young humans are the same. The boy had brown hair, lighter than Mona's, that flopped into his eyes, which were squinting a bit in the bright sunlight. Hey, a puppy, he said, and I could hear the pleasure in his voice. He came to kneel beside me. Can I pet him? Sure, Mona said. That's his job, being petted. Want to hold him? She scooped me up and dumped me into the boy's lap. My foot was still itching and I was ready for a nap, but I knew I should greet this new person. I got to my feet on my chest and licked him in the face, tasting something salty and delicious on his mouth that he must have eaten for breakfast. He laughed and used both hands to scratch my back and rub my ears. Once I was done tasting him, I laid down in his lap and closed my eyes. Nona and the new boy talked a little while his hands stroked my back. So, are you visiting somebody? I heard Mona ask. Yeah, my grandfather. He's moving in, the boy said. What about you? Do your grandparents live here or something? No, my mom and I, I mean, my mom doesn't live here. She works here. She's a therapist, and I come on the weekends a lot. I help out with Toby. That's the little guy's name, Toby? I thumped my tail sheepishly when I heard my name. 
It starts with a T, just like mine. I'm Tyler. I'm Mona, Mona said. I wagged a bit for her name, too. There was a moment when neither of them talked, although it felt like both of them wanted to. So, um, Toby sure seems calm for a beagle, the boy said at last. Yeah, he is, Mona sounded relieved to have something to say. That's why we got him. He's going to be a therapy dog. Cool, the boy said. Are you training him? You must be really good at it. I mean, they don't let kids train dogs usually, I guess. Mona laughed. I wagged again. Oh, no, I'm not a real trainer or anything. I just read some books and stuff, and I like dogs. I want to do that when I grow up, though. Train dogs. I love dogs. Me, too. Wish I had one at home. My mom says maybe someday, but I guess it's better not to have one right now. We're going to be coming up here on weekends a lot, visiting my grandfather, making sure he's settled in okay. That's good, Mona reached a hand out to pet me. I sighed. Some of the people here, they don't get a lot of visitors. It's really sad for them. Toby's going to help them with that. Dogs are great company. Yeah, for sure. Hey, can I take Toby to meet my grandfather? Sure you can. He loves new people. Mmm, the boys seem to hesitate. Maybe you should come too. Even half asleep as I was, I felt a funny sort of heat come over Mona, and she seemed not sure what to say. But when I half opened one eye to peek at her, she was smiling. Yeah, okay, sure, she answered. You carry Toby.